Hey there, I'm Maddie from ATAR Wizard and today I'm going to be going through the VCA Psychology Unit 3 area of study 2 dot point number 1. Now this dot point reads, behaviourist approaches to learning as illustrated by classical conditioning as a three phase process that results in the involuntary association between a neutral stimulus and unconditioned stimulus to produce a conditioned response. And Operant conditioning as a three-phase process involving reinforcement and punishment. So this is, so essentially we're going to be looking at classical conditioning and operant conditioning. So two quite large concepts, but we can do it. So I'm going to be using the Complete Psychology Units 3 and 4 Notes package from ATAR Wizard, which is available by, via the link in the description. You can also book one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me via the link in the description. So I look forward to seeing you there. So let's get started. So looking at behaviorist approaches to learning and the three-phase process of classical conditioning. So this demonstrates involuntary learning, which is important to remember. So involuntary, and it takes place in three stages before, during, and after conditioning. So this is quite wordy. It's going to be a great advantage to you if you just literally wrote, learn, remember the, this wording, because then you don't have to, um, you don't have to think about it in the exam or in your SACs. And at some point, I promise you, you're going to be asked a question about, which is essentially just asking you to restate this. Oh, it's probably going to happen more than once. And it's really great if you can just withdraw that from your memory super easily. So before conditioning, the unconditioned stimulus or the UCS produces the unconditioned response. So the UCS results in the UCR in the UCR and the neutral stimulus produces no relevant response during conditioning the neutral stimulus is repetitively paired immediately before the unconditioned stimulus which produces the unconditioned response this repetitive and immediate pairing of the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus creates an association so it's associative learning. It creates an association between the two stimuli. So the brain is essentially taught that exposure to the UCS indicates it should expect the UCR. So the brain already knows that the UCS indicates it should expect the UCR. And now we're bringing in this association between the neutral stimulus and the unconditioned response. So after conditioning, the neutral stimulus is now referred to as the conditioned stimulus. And the, conditioned stimuli, and the conditioned stimulus produces the conditioned response, which is similar to the UCR. So here is a good old example. A child could develop a fear of cats through classical conditioning. So before conditioning, being scratched elicits a fear response. Furthermore, the cat or the neutral stimulus initially elicits no relevant response. So being scratched, is something that the child is scared of by anything is something the child is scared of and cats elicit no relevant response during conditioning the cat is repetitively presented immediately before being scratched which elicits the fear response and after so the cat is scratching the kid after conditioning the cat elicits the fear response without the feeling of being scratched so the child is now scared of cats and that is classical conditioning operant conditioning we'll move on to now so operant conditioning is a kind of learning in which the consequences of a behavior contribute to if the behavior is likely to be repeated again in the future in this model of learning the learner is active and the response to the stimulus is voluntary the three steps to operant conditioning are the antecedent behavior and then the consequence these are sometimes memorized as the ABCs of operant conditioning. So A being antecedent, B being behavior, and then C being consequence. So the antecedent is the environmental trigger. So what causes the behavior to occur? The behavior is the action which occurs in response to an environmental trigger. So the action and the consequence is the consequence 
to is the response to the action which determines if the person is more or less likely to repeat the behavior if faced again with the cause the antecedent so there are four types of consequence that might be invoked We've got positive reinforcement so something is added making it more likely for the behavior to be repeated We've got negative reinforcement, something is taken away, making it more likely for the action to be repeated. We've got positive punishment, something is added, making it less likely for the person to perform the behaviour again. And we've got negative punishment, so something is taken away, making it less likely for the person to perform the behaviour again. So this is quite a mouthful. You can remember it as when it says positive, something is added. You can't read that. So here and here, something is added. Negative, something is taken away. So positive is add, something's added to make, um, something's added and negative is taken away. Punishment means the person is less likely to repeat the action. So if it's punishment, they're less likely to repeat the action. If it's reinforcement, they're more likely to repeat the action. So, for example, someone might get into a car and put on their seatbelt in order to avoid the beeping noise of not wearing the seatbelt causes. And in this case, getting in the car without a seatbelt and hearing the beeping is the antecedent. Putting on a seatbelt is the behaviour and the consequence is the negative reinforcement of no longer having to hear the beep. So the beep goes away, making you more likely to repeat the behaviour of putting on the seatbelt. Now that is it for this episode. So again, you can grab these notes via the link in the description. And there is also the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring with me via the link in the description. So you can book that and I look forward to seeing you there. Next episode, we're going to look at social cognitive approaches to learning. So again, I will see you there and Remember to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video and for supporting the ATAR Wizard YouTube channel. It really, really means a lot to us. So thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye.